what I think as oversimplified version of BFA. Specifically, since we have entered into a discrete domain where we are dealing with finite numbers only and we are not at all now associated with uh, some continuous functions, their integrations and all that, the things are more simple. In the sense that uh, we are having the original sequence of some capital N bit number which we are considered as 16 and from that we derive another set of 16 numbers and we can say that the newly derived set of 16 numbers is more useful in providing some information which already is there in the original signal but in a more exhibitory way that's what, what is most important is no transform can create the information information is there in the signal only the number 16 was deliberately chosen so as to give you a wider impact but today we shall try to reduce it to A so that we can write the equations all the time and give you a fair idea so just as a recap we can very easily find that Xn is a sequence of let us say now 8 values is an 8 point sequence that is we have xn means x0 till x7 these are 8 bit 8 samples some of them can be a 2 dimensional number because it is a broader way with which we are looking at the things even though that is not realizable but we are looking it to be two dimensional one dimensional we can very well consider because it is a what we can say subset of two dimensional number with the other dimension being zero so we have eight numbers with us and from these eight numbers we generate another set of eight numbers as x case Those are from x0 till x7. We had noted down that we are having an equation for xk <coughs> and that equation is actually a summation and that summation is a weighted summation of all excels <coughs> means what we have got <coughs> we are considering all values of xn with suitable multipliers to derive an individual x key so <coughs> we can write it in a matrix form The matrix for this I have taken value as 8 because it is somewhat more easy to write the matrix form when we are having 8 values. So there would be an 8 by 8 matrix, there would be an 8 by 8 matrix 
to which I can, for my simplicity, give the weights as say. I will use W for weights, but you should not confuse it with, with our W in that sense. W zero zero till W seven seven. This capital X zero is W zero zero into small x zero plus W zero one into small x one. <coughs> Likewise, plus up to W zero seven into small x seven. Is it clear? So we have got eight equations. We have got eight equations. Is it all right? We we were having original eight values. This I can say variables. Why? Because I don't know what the values are actually. So I had original eight variables. I these are the constants called as a transforming matrix. So I operate this transforming matrix over the original variables. And thus, I get eight equations. I get eight equations. If you are finding it difficult to handle eight time, then we can take four also or two also. So let us make it four. We when we make it four, we can have a simple one, and we can write x zero, x one, x two. And x3, and each with now there may not be a need to write the matrix form because these are very small in number. So we can write down w00 x0 plus w01. I we write all because there is some meaning. Plus w02 x2 plus w03 x3. Likewise, let me complete. W one zero x one plus W sorry x zero one one x one plus W one two x two plus W one three x three. We had not taken two because if we had taken two, it would have been too simple. So four is, I think, a very moderate variable figure. Four by four matrix. Is it clear now? 
Now there is a simple question. The simple question is, is it possible to get back, suppose if now I have some values, small x0, small x1, small x2, small x3. I operate this matrix over these values. So what I get? Capital X0, capital X1, capital X2, capital X3. Now the question is, is it possible for me to get back these small values? Always yes. If the inverse exists. So what can be a simple combination of debate matrix and identity matrix? So if I design the weight matrix to be an identity matrix, a matrix will it be a transformation? It will not be a transformation to that sense. Because it will give me x0 equal to original sequence. Capital X0 small x0. Can I have a reverse diagonal matrix, identity matrix? Can I have weight matrix as other diagonal matrix? 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0. If so, what will happen? It will just shuffled. One value will be going to the other place. But that way it's a transformation. It's a transformation. It may not mean much significant thing, but it's a transformation. So, what we should have is number one if we want the original values back then the matrix must be invertible matrix and once we ensure that the matrix is invertible or let us say non singular in that context when the matrix is non singular then the way in which you arrange various weight functions that will provide you the appropriate information in the transformed samples or transformed signal space. We have original signal space small x0 to x3. We want it to convert it into another signal space capital X0 to capital X3. We have 4 by 4 matrix. The only condition which we have to follow is that it must be invertible. <clears throat> and once we are having an invertible 4 by 4 matrix, are you fire searching some new matrix? You have a new matrix in your mind? So I thought that on the uh, notebook there is a new matrix and you are looking at the values of it. <clears throat> so once we satisfy the invertibility condition, then you can come up with any matrix you want. So that will be your own transformation. Right? That will be your own transformation. Whether that transformation is significant or not, that will depend upon in what particular manner your X case exhibit the information. So you can broadly classify just by having different values and different transform is uh, not anyway adding to the information because I can just change the weight of one so that it will be different transform. That will be different transform. But that is not the major uh, what we can say activity. So we can classify various transformations. Now there are various ways with which we are looking at it. Can you go from real to real transformation? If your weight matrix, if we consider that my original sample number set is a real number set, if I define my weight matrix as real matrix, my transformed sample set would also be a real set. But with comfortable association with the complex number theory 
that e raised to j theta is cos theta plus j sin theta or a complex number c1 is actually complex number c1 is actually a representation of a1 and b1 together we can treat everything in this as a complex thing so actually when we are writing a complex thing it can be said to be writing two things together you can isolate real parts and imaginary parts in an effective way so what we can have we can think xn to be also two dimensional even though when we are sampling the things of some real time signals like voltage there is no question of two dimensional things it's a even dimensional but broadly we can think xn two dimensional <coughs> weight matrix two dimensional <coughs> and naturally x k would be two dimensional in practice weight matrix we, which we have defined as wn raised to kn what this w00 what these are now actually this w00 or this the this w this is for k and this for n, this for k is for m so w k n is equal to in this case w 4 raised to k n where w 4 is equal to e raised to minus z 2 pi upon Or in general, this should be <coughs> n. So it should be. <coughs> Is it clear now? So my weights are two-dimensional here. My weights are two-dimensional, and <coughs> we have got. I do not know whether fortunately or otherwise for us, well developed the theory of complex numbers. including algebra geometry and calculus so that does not require me even trigonometry that does not require me to consider a complex number to a separate number once i have got e is to j theta or cos theta plus j theta j sin theta form it gives me what we can say j <coughs> simplified straight forward calculations without bothering for a particular number to be real or imaginary or complex we can derive good meaning out of it if we are well conversant with terminology as well as our own understanding a failure in either will take us into a complex situation so we must find ourselves in a simple situation while dealing with the complex numbers is it clear so if so what is now so in short what is the crux of this entire discussion it's if i have capital n samples or if i have a set of capital n numbers i can transform it into another set of capital n n numbers which is invertible by having capital n into capital n matrix right <coughs> so the weights of the matrix define the transformation whether there is any scope for finding out a new transformation can be an area of research for you because as is n by n matrix various non singular combinations are available you can go to any sort of such combinations <laughs> and come up with an invertible invertible transformation only thing is that you are think of some transformation what is then the notebook so the transformation should mean something or not 
that will depend upon what information is it, it exhibits in the transform domain. And we are having its reduced and reduced and a final non-trivial version where we deal with a set of two numbers. Where we deal with a set of two numbers, x0 and x1. When we deal with x0 and x1, and in that situation, what we have got? And that we get transformed to and the matrix which we have got is like this. So there are only four values with which we have to deal. There are only four values. And how the matrix looks like? For DFT, the 2 by 2 matrix is for DFT, the 2 by 2 matrix is 1, 1, 1, one, one, minus, one, one, minus, one. minus 1. It is the only all the real <coughs> transformation matrix. Only for two point DFT we get all the real transformation matrix. So if my sequence is real, my transform is also real. If in all other cases, we don't get this thing. In all other cases, if my sequence is real, my transform is complex. And if my transform is real, my sequence is complex. So is, it, is it clear now? So I again repeat that the discrete Fourier transform terms are the weighted sums of original sample terms. So what is important is in what particular way the weights are arranged. So we have to arrange the weights in such a manner that number one, the overall weight matrix should be invertible or non-singular <coughs> and the arrangement of the weights should lead to boosting of something and cancellation of something in a particular x k so that I can say that the original samples have got all the features. So if I want to extract some features, then I should boost those features which I want to extract and I should cancel the other features. While finding every XK, I am looking at all terms together. While finding every XK, I am looking at all essence. Agreed? So, if I look at all essence, with the same amount, I will get only average. If I look at only one term, while actually, while looking at sample, we are not looking at all samples simultaneously. Actually, sample itself is a transform. Sample is a transform itself. Do you agree? <coughs> Do you agree? Why? My question is justify whether the sample domain itself is a transform. Yes or no? How?
Yes or no? How? We don't find the, we don't find the exact uh, what is that. No, no, no. Is it because it's an identity transformation? If I have got weight matrix and identity matrix, if I have got weight matrix and identity matrix, the transformed domain is the sample itself. So what I indicate? It indicates that when I look at the sample one at a time, at that time, what I'm doing? I'm <coughs> Looking only at that and ignore the others. When I look at the signal itself, I am looking at one sample at a time. When I am looking at one sample at a time, I can simply say that I am having all the samples. I am ignoring all and looking at this. Then I am ignoring these and this and looking at this. So this I am boosting, others I am ignoring. So, the way in which these XKs should contain the information or we can have in general a matrix XK is equal to some map is actually a column matrix. It is a some symbol and column, I think we will not go into that unnecessary complex terminologies. So, this x0 will x1, x2, x3. So, these are various values of capital X case. So, in what manner? Capital XK should give the information about the signal that is underlying where? That is underlying in the way in which these weights are arranged. So capital X0 multiplies or capital X0 is the resultant of the weighted average of these. So Look, I am considering all x0 to x3, all small x0 to small x3, I am considering while, com while computing capital X0. So, in what way I am arranging the weights that will provide me the information about the, a particular feature of the signal. So, it is in a way, feature extraction. Every XK <coughs> extracts some feature of the signal. And we should not repeat, otherwise it will not, it will not be notable. So, capital X0 extracts which feature of the signal? Capital X0 extracts which <coughs> feature of the signal? Every. All weights are one. The first row is one. So it extracts the feature called as average. Multiplied by obviously capital N. <coughs> so it, it extracts the mean feature of all actions. Then if uh, we are only with two, what will happen? This is mean or sum and this difference. If we are looking at only 2 by 2, then capital X0 extracts the sum feature of the signal and capital X1 extracts the difference feature of the signal. So these are the original samples, these are the original samples, X0, X1. Same I can represent in terms of sum and difference either in this way or in this way. So, in some applications, the original sample domain representation may be meaningful, whereas there may be some other applications in which the transform domain representation is meaningful. If we expand 2 by 2 to 4 by 4, 
then we can look at the values and our looking at the values themselves will give you a fair idea how the values are 1 1 1 and 1 and also what we have got 1 1 and 1 can you tell the other terms what is W4? W4 is Z. e raised to minus z pi by 2 is what? e raised to minus z pi by 2 is what? e raised to minus z pi by 2 is minus z. Is minus z. Right? Is it correct? Is it Minus z. So once it is minus z, what will happen? What this would be? Minus z. 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 z. What this would be? Minus z. Minus z. Minus z. What about this? Minus z. Minus z. Minus z. Then one, 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 when you look at this matrix, so it's a what we can say very handy as well as informative matrix. There can be one, there can be one point transformation. Why not? Can there be one point transformation? Yes or no? Yes. It would be only scaling. And if the scaling is by zero, if the scaling is by zero, then it will be non invertible. If the scaling is by infinity, again it will be non invertible. Otherwise it is vertical, but that way it is not trivial. If that is a, it is a very transform. <coughs> so 2 by 2 is also handy, non-trivial, but what we can say, very simple. So 4 by 4 is optimum. Optimum in the sense, it gives us the idea of two dimensions. That way it is handy also, small. When you go to 8 by 8, 16 by 16, faculties of our mind does not allow us to look at 16 by 16 that is 256 value or 8 by 8 64 values at a time but we can look at 16 values so in that sense 4 by 4 is optimum you can look at all together so capital X 0 capital X 1 capital X 2 So now when we look at it, capital X what indicates? Capital X zero indicates the sum or average, right? Capital X zero indicates the sum or an average with a multiplier. That's no problem. Everybody understood. Now, what capital X one contains? What capital X one contains? Are you sure about this matrix now?
और देश में रख परफेक्ट सो नाउ व्हाट कैपिटल एक्स वन कंटेंट्स
So x1 more x1 means what? More x1 means what? More x1 would be the indication of which feature you feel. Which feature? More x1. What does it mean?